Thank you and welcome. We're back with another episode of the Streetpreneurs Podcast. And today we have two gentlemen, two entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs, and they're the owners of Paradise Smoothie and Juice Bar here in the Atlanta area. I want both of you guys to introduce yourselves and just tell us a little bit about um, your journey. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Bill Johnson, uh, CEO and co-founder of Paradise Smoothie Juice Bar, uh, where we have four locations. We're located in Mableton, um, uh, at Greenbrier Mall in the Atlanta area. We're actually in the food court there, the healthy choice option in the mall. Uh, we're also located two sp spots in Marietta, one up in North Marietta off of Canton Road and down off of South in South Marietta uh, off of Powder Springs Road. Um, and uh, yeah, we're Paradise Smoothie Juice Bar. Our motto is enhancing the health of the communities we serve one sip at a time. And our, our motto and mission is uh, you know, Paradise pow Powers Performance. Mm -hmm. And my name is Ron Bolden. I'm the CEO, COO and co-founder of Paradise Smoothie Juice Bar. Okay, okay. Sounds great, man. What, what inspired you to go into the juice bar industry? I know it's needed. You know, you all, you guys are very, um, your products are very health conscious mm -hmm. and it's needed in the community. Mm -hmm. especially in the African-American community. Mm -hmm. So just kind of tell us what inspired you to, to start the smoothie bar. Just kind of what yeah. was that process like? Well, I, I, uh, a few years ago I moved into a neighborhood, and um, lo and behold I had one of the best neighbors you can have, Mr. Bolden. He was my next-door neighbor. Oh, yeah. He welcomed us in, and uh, me and Ron, I have a front porch. He, he has a nice back porch with the cover and everything. I got the front porch. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> periodically we used to yeah. sit on the front porch and talk about different things. And um, he noticed that when we moved in, I had my father living with me. Mm -hmm. uh, we were caring for him uh, through the later years. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, in getting to know each other and talking, you know, we started uh, discussing things about, you know, what it is about aging and uh, talking about all the different health right conditions that people go through <clears throat> you know whether it be high blood pressure all the gut related things the high blood pressures the di diabetes right. the co high cholesterols the strokes the heart attacks the you know uh some of the uh you know uh esoteric diseases or you know illnesses that we we have as a community and um Ways to get around it, above and beyond just the exercise piece. You know, it's, it starts first with what you put in your body. Your body. And so, um, you know, having to manage my father's care, right. you know, I got an opportunity to see what the future could look like in reality, in real time. And not just with him, for me, being his son, but also with uh, being around other uh, seniors that was in his situation when I take him to appointments or to the senior centers and stuff and just hearing all the stories and just realizing that, hey, you know, if people get ahead of this early, you know, what can we do to do a better job of it? Some and preventative measures. Preventative measures. You know, it, it, an ounce of prevention is uh, right. worth a pound of cure, right? right? That's, a, that's an adage. But with what we have going at Paradise, Ron and I, you know, his family is very health conscious as well, and I'll let him speak to that. Okay. Uh, but, um, you know, for us, it just seemed like a nice synergy, the way we spoke mm -hmm. about those things. And he was, at, you know, he admired mm -hmm. what my dad had done, being a, a veteran and things of that nature, and mm -hmm. going through the things he had to go through mm -hmm. uh, and understanding those conditions. And Ron and I are, are from similar age areas, but we have some some difference in our in our upbringing, right. but we found some synergies on different things, the diet that we used to have versus what people do today. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'll pick, turn it over to Ron. Uh, and for me, you know, my life's journey basically has been trying to be healthy. Um, I spent 20 years in the Marine Corps. Okay. Okay. And uh, somewhere around my 10th year in the Marine Corps, someone had passed in my family, uh, one of my older uncles. Yeah. And I started reflecting on that, and I was like, wow, why is everyone in my um, uncles passing away in their 60s? Mm -hmm. And I put it all together. Mm -hmm. They all ate the same. Yeah. And for me at that time, I probably was 30 years old. I'm like, I need to have a paradigm shift. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I stopped eating salt, and I stopped putting a lot of things in my, uh, taking a lot of things out of my diet. I was already exercising because the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. you discipline. know. They, they gave me the discipline to, yeah. to exercise. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, but I hadn't gotten my eating habits together yet. Uh, So when I retired, you know, 10 years later, I still was exercising, but I still hadn't mastered the eating. And so I started picking up. It's definitely hard. It's definitely hard. So I had to start picking up weight and, um, you know, maybe about 10, 15 pounds I had picked up. And I'm like, I got to start doing something. So what made me start doing something was my my baby was born when I was 46. Mm -hmm. And he got me back off the couch. And so I started exercising, and then I started changing, really changing and deep diving into what I ate. And that's when I started just eating more uh, fruit and vegetables and things that kind of line us up for this business. So it was almost like preparation meets opportunity. You know, I was eating well, and then when the opportunity to partner with my my partner, Mm. it was right in line with what I had been trying to do over those years. Okay. Great, great, great information, great news. So let's talk a little bit about the competition in the marketplace. What sets Paradise Smoothie, um, what differentiates you besides your competition? What we do is we're, you know, mostly plant-based. You know, we don't use any yogurt. We don't use any dairy. We don't use the raw sugar. We use a plant-based sweetener called agave nectar. Okay. That comes from a cactus plant. Right. So where we differ is, is that, Everything that we use is from a plant, and it's natural, and it's, you know, the food that you grew up eating, you know, the fruit and the vegetables and things to tell your mother told you that you got to eat on your plate. And so that's where we're a little bit different at. We've created some wellness shots. Our wellness shots help with uh, lowering your cholesterol, your blood pressure, your blood sugar. They help to give you energy. Uh, They give you the gut health that you need. So on our health, our smoothies are healthy. Our wellness shots are healthy. That makes us a little bit different than our competitors where they're using the raw sugars. They're using the puree fruit or whatever they call it. And it's just not as a a healthy option as we are. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In in, in addition to that, you know, we, we, we really stand behind three real tenants Mm -hmm. uh, just layering on what Ron built on that we've found that really adds to a nutritious meal. It can still be delicious, which our drinks are, by the way, but you want to make sure that you're getting at least some fiber. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you're getting your your water, your hydration, Mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that whatever you're taking in is is going to replenish and give the body the minerals Mm -hmm. and that mineral balance that the body needs. needs, And so with all the items we deal with, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, Nothing spikes your body. See, that's what puts you in your body into those compromising positions. You take things in that causes a spike or a surge uh, that insulin disrupts the increases body. Insulin. It, yeah, for example, you know, you can do pressed juice, yeah. but without the fiber, it's just going to spike your blood sugar and your insulin levels sometimes, right, depending on what you do. But mm-hmm. when you have that fiber, the great thing about the fiber intake mm-hmm. is it regulates all of that. It's kind of like a time release or mm-hmm. a traffic cop at mm-hmm. times, or mm-hmm. it's uh, an evaluator that says, hey, we see that you have a certain balance of minerals, of zinc in your body. So instead of, you know, you know, putting zinc in there, let's do some potassium over here or whatever. It's kind of a good a regulator. It's a, balance. it's a balancer. Yeah, and so that's one of the keys there, too. That's just some simple things in the back end of it. How, is, how important is doing detox? A lot of people are really into detox, a three-day de- detox, the five-day, the cleanse. Can you kind of just break that down? Do you need to do that detox first before you? No. Uh, so, so here, here's the bit, the beauty. There's of There's a lot of information out about yeah. detox. Everybody's doing a so, detox so, challenge or something of that nature. So, so, so not to not to overwhelm people. I'll keep mm-hmm. it real simple. Right. If you put something in your body, mm-hmm. it, it, God has given you two min- at, at a minimum two exit points. Right. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. And those exit mm-hmm. points need to be on a regular basis. Okay. Right. Because you're putting stuff in your body on a regular basis. Right. And so if you notice that there's not a synergy between when you put something in and shortly thereafter, something is not coming out, then you got it. You got a backup somewhere. And that lets you know that there is some level of 
detoxification right. that you need. So your body naturally does that and is designed to detox itself right. on a regular basis. Right. Now, some people have to do it because they have to do a purge right. because they are so backed up or backed clogged up, up and, yeah. or right. have that it's blockage of because of years of not <laughs> paying attention to that. Right. right. And so that's where this surge has come about. Okay. So the great thing about that goes back to what I said earlier. Right. Fiber is a great balance or, or a, a regulator for that, right? right? Hydration is a great regulator or balancer right. for that, yes, right? Is. And so when you can get those two in a consistent fashion, right. the way that we do it in our packaging right. uh, through the form of smoothies, shakes, right. 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 wellness drinks, et cetera, et cetera, it's a good way to right. consume it. I was watching a Mike Tyson interview on, on a podcast, and he mentioned he doesn't drink cold water in the bottle right. because it bloats you. Right, right, I re- right. A lot of people didn't know that. I didn't know that myself. You bring drink um, room temperature room tem- water. Temperature water. Just kind of breaks that down. Tell us the difference about that. Because most people are going to run to the fridge and just grab a water, cold, yeah. ice cold water, and drink it in something. You're thinking that. But doing his training for the fight, he mentioned I always drink warm water. Well, yeah. So, so you know, your body has a natural core temperature right. around 98 plus you know, degrees between 97.5 to 98.2 or 3 or whatever, right? Right. So that's a pretty hot thing. If you take some water and you you put it at that temperature range, your finger is going to come out of that water real quick because it's going to feel hot, right? right? Right. So that's where your body is. Mm -hmm. So if you take a hot skillet, for example, Mm -hmm. and you pour cold water on it, Mm -hmm. what does it do? It causes that skillet to start. Sizzling. Sizzling, Sizzling or contracting yeah. or creating a, right. a, a, a negative defensive reaction. Right. So I don't know if, if it's so much about the inflammation or causing them to inflame, that's what but is. that's what it's going to do. Yeah. Right. It's going to inflame. It's going to right. cause your body to react right. differently because you're right. putting this cold water on this warm thing. Right. When you do the room temperature, it's a lot better. You don't have as big of a gap between the temperature piece. Right. And so you don't cause your body to start constricting and reacting differently. Right. right? Um, there's a lot of essence of uh, science behind right. it. I don't want to okay. belabor that. Right. But, you know, there, if people want to debate it, we can, you know. But at the end of the day, I think I try to keep it as simple as we can. Right. Room temperature is best. You know, when you do your salads and your and your your your, mm-hmm. your veggies and stuff, mm-hmm. raw as best as possible. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Great advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where all the fibers at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Can you walk us through the process of opening your first store location? Oh wow. That's <laughs> the process. That's a whole. That's, that's, a, that's, that's, that's going to take up a whole day. Yeah. 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 Well, well we, we, we just we quick has, give us a, some unique stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Give us a quick overview of the step by step process of. What it takes to what you know what it took you guys to open that first store location. Mm-hmm. Well, our first store, um, which is in Mableton, is the, actually mm-hmm. one we acquired. Right, it's the flagship store. Right, it's the flagship store. Right. The next location was in the Greenbrier Mall area. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that area there, you know, we went in there and they had a basically a utility closet oh. that uh, they would like to you know rent out to someone. Mm-hmm. And you know we looked at it. You like we make smoothies, and we don't need a whole lot of space. Let's give it a shot. So it's you know, so it uh, so we went through the process of mm-hmm. going through the county, getting all the permits, and you know, finding somebody to build it out—a carpenter, an elect- uh, electrician, and mm-hmm. all those things to to make to be able to pass the permitting for the health department. And then once we passed all those, we got our permits. You know, the steps are pretty easy. We just bought all the product to, to go in there, the machinery that we needed, mm-hmm. uh, put everything in there. And since we had already had the experience yeah. of running the, the flagship store, mm-hmm. it was just cut and play. Mm-hmm. You know, open up the windows and the doors and make the smoothies and um, mm-hmm. let the people come and taste them in the Greenbrier area. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us the startup cost? Just a brief estimate of what you think it would be. Just you know, so a lot of our listeners who are also planning to right. might want to open a smoothie shop. Right. Just just a brief estimate. Of well, well, we do we we, we do offer franchising. So if you get an opportunity, go to get in. yeah yeah yeah. So you know we we do uh, can get more depth. But just as a high level range, right. you're gonna you're gonna have roughly uh, depending on your square footage and your late your your ability to build out. 
you're looking at anywhere from um, twenty thousand to about thirty five thousand dollars to to build out a structure uh, for a smoothie bar, uh, depending on how elaborate you want it to be. Uh, and then, and that's not having any type of vent hoods for cooking food. We we do everything raw, so we don't we don't have any type of you know oh, uh, yeah, hot you hot type right. of things right. that would add to it because right. you have to accommodate for those that type of equipment in in department. Uh, then with your equipment, you're looking at another ten to fifteen thousand dollars worth of varying equipment. Whether it be uh, if you want to do cold press juices as well then those are pretty expensive. Uh, you can possibly get away with using used equipment, which, mm -hmm. you know, starting out from scratch, I would say, hey, uh, you know, if you're trying to build and create something, you know, you do used equipment where you can, you know, to minimize your cost mm -hmm. and then allow your business, once you get it open, to, you know, supplement or subsidize you being able to go back and replace that with newer equipment, right? Mm -hmm. um, so those are ways that you can get things off the ground going to bootstrap it yourself. Okay. Um, and then on top of that, uh, you need to have some working capital, yeah. you know, so you need to have some money set aside for not only purchasing your product and your ingredients, and the things that's going to be on your shelves as well, mm -hmm. but you also need to have a little money to, you know, money to cover your staff uh, until your revenues can back that up. Right. Uh, and then you're going to need some money to also put in your pocket if you are the staff uh, or, you know, to cover your time to be involved there unless you just have mm -hmm. resources to kind of set aside and budget that. So those are just some high level points of points to, get to, to check off. And to Ron's point, obviously, you got to take care of your permitting, understanding what that cost is. It can vary depending on the municipality that you're in or the city right. for those that aren't aware of that. You know whatever city that you're in and what re uh, requirements they have, okay. uh, you got to look at. You know some places you may be able to get everything done in 60 days, depending on what all you have uh, done and how smooth their process is. And then some places it can go up to six months. Mm -hmm. uh, during mm -hmm. COVID, which is one one of our stores, you know normally we were able to turn things around within a 90 day cycle. Uh, during COVID, uh, with all the changes and challenges that people had and municipalities had, uh, it wound up pushing that normal project of six months, I mean, uh, uh, three months out, uh, it pushed it out to about seven or eight months. So close to a year. Uh, yeah. yeah. So oh. it really made a ch made an impact yeah. to, you know, our money because, you know, we were budgeting for getting open in 90 days, th back. three months, 90 days and start oh. making money. You know, you want to negotiate free rents. That's what they call tenant improvements. So you want to have those negotiated. Some people aren't aware of those terms. You want to try to negotiate free rent, free rents within your um, places you that you go into if you're renting. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to negotiate any type of uh, re re reimbursement for upgrades that you do to places. Like, you know, anything you can't take with you is an upgrade to that space. So you want to negotiate that with the landlord up front. So there's different pieces with and nuances land. that people need to be aware of that sometimes new, new business owners or uh, people going into these spaces aren't introduced to. And that's why we created our brand and made it as a franchise, because we want to be able to educate people even more deeper into that thing with a low-cost, e economically friendly opportunity to get into business, and that's what Paradise is about. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about marketing. Mm -hmm. As far as marketing and branding of Paradise, what were some of the strategies that you used? Just uh, to get the business name out, did you give our product samples? Did you yes. go to different businesses in the area? Did yeah. you? So, so what we've done mm -hmm. is a, a variety of different things. Uh, we've right. done uh, print media, uh, we've done uh, you know our social media, right. and a lot of things that we've been doing nowadays is uh, going to festivals, yeah. like we met at the Taste of Vegans. Uh, we freeze our our smoothies into uh, four ounce or six ounce pouches and 16 or 20 ounce pouches and as people come to our tables they taste them and so it starts to build our brand so we try to get out in the streets uh, to these different type of festivals as much as we can uh, go to the schools uh, right in the local area because uh, you know the schools are right down to down the street from our shops so we get into schools and, and brand ourselves that way and uh, just continue to try to build, uh, let people know who we are and where we are. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Good. Good job. Um, as far as employees, mm -hmm. that's always difficult for any business is retaining employees, especially now in the recession that we're in and coming out of COVID and things of that nature. What are some of the 
um, strategy that you use to retain employees? Mm-hmm. Well, recruit uh, and I, retain employees. What I do, what I've learned is just treat people nice. Yeah. You know, treat people how you want to be treated and people will want to work for you. Yes, sure. And so, you know, when I find somebody who I think has good qualities and they want to work for us, uh, then, you know, we just treat them nice mm-hmm. and just try to hold on to them. And uh, most of our staff are, you know, young and most of them, you know, want to work with their friends. Yes. So we uh, we find, uh, you know, somebody that's good. We're like, hey, who do you know who wants a job? And all young people have friends who want to come and work with them. Uh, they can go and work anywhere that they want to work, yeah. but they'd rather work with their friends. And so I found that, you know, treating kids nice, finding out who their friends are, and so far that's worked. Uh, we were able to keep the staff in, in most of in all of our stores, um, and all the kids know each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, an, and an additional thing we do, we, we pay our hourly rate and we also do a tip uh, situation, right? Yeah. Right. And that's something that we've, um, again, you know, at Paradise, you know, we're, we're all about not just making a buck, but we also want to want to educate yeah. every aspect of what we do especially in our communities. We want to educate you as a customer, a consumer. We want to make sure we're making an impact that way. Uh, we want to educate in, 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 in on, the, on the other side of the, ca- of the counter, which is our staff and our employees, because we want them to feel like they're a part of the organization as well. So the tip situation is one because it's like, hey, you know, if you're nice to the customers, if you have a, a passion about what you're doing, the customers are going to get that. They're going to recognize that. If you move with a certain level of diligence, they recognize that, and they'll, they'll show appreciation from that. And now you're getting a – it's a kind of like basically doing a, a revenue share or profit share mm-hmm. uh, within the integration of the business and in the flows of the business, right? Um, you know, and then we try to get our staff to also be a part of, you know – uh, sharing and, and tagging us in the social media social aspects media. of things mm-hmm. so that they can feel good about, hey, you're wearing this shirt when you're out and about. You know, you, you're wearing our logo. You're wearing it on your chest. Personal wear it just like you wear wow. your Nikes. Wear it with a badge of courage because when you're out, you never know who's going to ask you a question. Oh, I'm a customer over there. I go to the Marietta shop. Or I'm a customer. I go to Mableton. So, you know, just be conscious of those things. And we try to, you know, educate them. And then, like Ron said, we treat people – we try our best to treat people how we would like them to treat us and, you know, feel as though it's a family environment, you know, but we make sure that they understand it's business, too. Oh, know? yes, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, as far as franchising and expansion that you've been successful at doing so far, how long did that process take to open multiple locations? Well, we've been in the business for four years now. Uh, the first two years we had two and then uh, I think a year, two years later, we opened up two uh, simultaneously uh, within a month of one another. So we, we started in 2018, and so far we've built our brand to four. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, and we were intentional about, you know, that, uh, you know, Ron and I, our, you know, our histories, obviously, we've, between the two of us, we have over 50 years plus of uh, business experience and, and acumen, right, and expertise mm-hmm. in various other areas. Uh, but, you know, obviously being in the restaurant food game is also a part of it. And so that was very beneficial in helping us understand what it took mm-hmm. to do certain things. Mm-hmm. Uh, preparation meeting opportunity, to Ron's point, uh, you know, having the right credit structures, uh, you know, funding, understanding how to set aside budgets yeah. and things of that nature, and then uh, being in position to when opportunities like PPP loans or EIDL loans come about, grants, uh, things of that nature, being able to go and apply and have your business set up to be able to qualify well, for those uh, things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you can, you're able to get those things, and then you leverage it and and turn it into what you can with it, right. you know. That's very important, yeah. leveraging credit. Yeah, yeah, that, most uh, definitely. Yeah, we definitely. Yeah. A lot of other entrepreneurs need to understand that process. And, yeah, and, and business and business credit. In business in general, and business credit is well. different. It's different than consumer. A lot of people get caught up between consumer credit versus business credit. Business credit is designed for you to consume, right, because they know that you're doing it from a business mindset. So you're going to generate revenue in order to cover 
the cost basis of what you're consuming. And then because what we consume as a business, we're going to repackage that and then we're going to sell it to consumers. Yes. Right. So we're in the ecosystem of that whole credit mm -hmm. and capitalization process. Right. Mm -hmm. Versus if all you are is just a consumer on the back end and you're not contributing or being a part and playing a role in this capitalization system that we have here, then, yeah, you know, it's going to it's going to be a totally different experience, yeah. you know. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, again, those are things that we hope as people see our brand, see our franchising, see our model, mm -hmm. they'll say, hey, you know, this is a system that we would like to tap into. And uh, it's, it's definitely, uh, we were very specific and, 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 and mindful of how we designed this in such a way that it can fit very well into our communities as well as others. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, kind of walk us through the process of, um, of a person calling you, contacting you, like, hey, I want to purchase a, a, a franchise. Friend. Just kind of take us uh, through the steps of the process they would need to do in order to uh, acquire a franchise. Okay. So you could go to our website, uh, primary website. Uh, there's a link for accessing franchising. Or you can go directly to our franchise uh, landing page, which is franchising.paradisesmoothiejuicebar.com. Mm. You go to that site. Uh, there's a contact us page there. What happens is that would then send an email to our, um, we have a team that we work with that helped us design our franchise and helped us to um, register the franchise. Um, some people can do it independently. We chose to go with a consulting group to assist us with that. Uh, that group then will get that information. They'll do some surveys with you. You have you fill out a questionnaire just to verify your uh, worthiness from a financial perspective. And, also verify your interest in what we have and make sure this is a good brand that you want to be a part of. Good fit, yeah. Once we get that fit uh, analysis done, uh, we then have an opportunity. We call it um, uh, you sign an NDA. We'll then send you our franchise disclosure documentation, the franchise agreement information, the, the um, you know, so just you can see what our back end financials and all the uh, requirements are. Um, and then some of the uniqueness mm. about what breaks us paradise versus a smoothie mm. king or whoever else. Right. Um, then after we do that, we'll have like some discovery days. Uh, and that way you'll have a chance to meet with Ron and I directly mm. if you haven't already. So we can really sit down and mm. walk you through some of the process and the back end side of things so you can right. get a good right. look of it, look and right. feel of what the business looks like. After that, uh, you make a decision if you really want to move forward. And then we start signing paperwork. I'll get all the legalese out of the way, dot the I's, cross the T's. And then you will set, you know, give us the franchise fee uh, that is required in order to move to the next level of opening up your brand and your franchise. Um, and we start going through that process of, you know, you go through and you f we identify a location. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you right. set up your permitting, like Ron said, get your permits, the your licensing. licensing uh, we're there to support you. You still got to go through that because it is your business. See, one thing about us, you we're, still offer we're empowering you, but we're there to support you. You don't franchisee. have to feel like you're on an island, right? right? right. So we'll support the franchisee. Uh, we have the systems in place. We know what the you know who to contact, where, or uh, the processes that you normally would go through. Um, and anything new, we're there to be there along with you to help guide you through that process. Mm. Um, now, again, it is your business, so you still have to meet the do qualifications your, do, do your and do your due diligence. Right. Um, but we're here, like I said, as a as a group to insulate right. you through that process. Mm -hmm. So, tell us about your own expansion. What what uh, you want to expand, or how are you looking for new markets, new territories, or All just kind of tell us about. Um, you make some of your expansion plans. Yeah, yeah. So, like Mark, I'm, I'm sorry, like Ron said, you know, we are looking uh, to uh, hit new markets. Um, you know, there's obviously we only have four locations right now, and we're locally primarily in Atlanta locally area. in the Atlanta area. So it's a wide open. Yeah, you know, it's a wild, wild west for us. Yes, it is right now. Uh, even in other states, we are trademarked. Uh, with our branding and things of that nature and the branding of the name. So, you know, we are ready to support you wherever you go. Uh, the registrations uh, for uh, our, our franchising is set up for all, all 50 states. 
Uh, there are certain select states that require a register. They call them registration states. So there is a certain level of additional paperwork that has to be done in those spaces. But we are set up for that yeah. as well. Um, Can you talk about a little bit about the importance of trademark? Oh, man. That's, a lot uh, of people have business that, that don't have a trademark. Just tell us how the trademark has been beneficial in your business. How important is it? Well, it was very beneficial on the front end. Like Ron said, our initial step into this was we acquired a location. Okay. Okay. Um, in acquisition of that location, it was under a different name. Oh. And so um, the gentleman that we acquired the location from, he, we explained to him what our interest was and what we were trying to do. And initially he was like, well, instead of starting from scratch, why not we all just work as a partnership? Okay. okay. Uh, and so he already had an established name. And so we were like, okay, maybe we can deal with that. Did you have to buy the rights to? No. So, so, so basically he was like, well, we'll just start off as doing like a friend. It was, it was what, what, what a lot of people out here do. We were doing under the table stuff, right? right, right. <laughs> and so it was basically on principle, we would operate under that name. Just word of mouth. Under principle. principle. To maintain the, the customer base, you know, the, right. the following that he had built. I got you. I got you. Okay. Um, but we would still need to pass things through him in order not to tarnish the name that he had built. Um, unfortunately, uh, when that happened, we said, okay, we'll do it, but we're going to have to legitimize what we have going. Mm. Trademarking helps to legitimize your naming situation, okay? okay. Um, perfect example. I used to work for a brand years ago, and that brand is very well known here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. It's called Johnny's New York Style Pizza. Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay. They ran into a situation where they wanted to expand outside the state of Georgia. Well, when they attempted to do that, they found that there was other names that had Johnny's, Johnny's New York style pizza. pizza. And in order for them to register appropriately, they had either to deal with them legally or they had to make an adjustment to their name. So what they have is two separate name brands. I'm just using them as an example yeah. just to give you a, a point of emphasis right. around trademarking. Mm -hmm. So in the state of Georgia, they're known as Johnny's New York style pizza. Outside of the state of Georgia, they're known as Johnny Brusco's New York style oh, pizza. Okay. Okay. I've seen so that, because I, I was myself, attached I thought it was it, two different companies. Right. So right. a lot of people do. Right. No, they're they're the same brand, but they're the same brand. ownership, yeah. but just two separate brands. And so now that's a lot of overhead that you have to manage and you have to be prepared for that. So with us at Paradise, we were very intentional about making sure when we set this name up. It wasn't just local to Georgia. So you can go and get your trade name registered with the state of Georgia. Or you can get a nation. Or you can set it up where anticipating growth and scalability, you want to be able to protect yourself outside the state. Right, and so that's level. on a nation, on a national level. National and that's level. where you, bre you mm -hmm. trademark to make it more federal so you can cross boundaries, you can cross state lines, you can go okay. outside the U.S., you can go to other countries. Mm -hmm. That's where the trademarking piece comes into play. And no one can right. take right. a name in another state. Yeah, yeah. That's very important. Yeah. A lot of entrepreneurs that are listening to this. Well, would, well you got to anticipate growth. Definitely. And sometimes you don't do that. You just see what's in front of you. And that's fine uh, if that's what you want to do. But if you anticipate growth and expansion, you got to prepare for it. You yeah. set the foundation early. Right, no doubt, no doubt. Um, what do you see yourselves in the next five years? Oh, wow. Yeah. Being a regular on the street, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Where do we see Paradise in the next five years? I'm sure you guys are. Well, our goal is hopefully to have one in every state. Be, be have a presence in every state uh, within the next five years. That's um, huge. At a minimum, at a minimum, you know, really blow out Georgia and the southeast region. Um, you know, we would like to be. Uh, you know, there there are some big brands out here, you know, a Smoothie King, things of that nature that have global presence. Yeah, they and they started just like we did in one store, you know. Um, our intention is to bring, you know, enhancing the health of the communities we serve one sip at a time, being intentional about the locations. And, you know, when you can go into places like a Greenbrier Mall, into neighborhoods that are 
normally overlooked with a healthy choice option. You know, we want to be that solution that can go into those neighborhoods that are often overlooked and marginalized and have a, 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 a solution that can, hey, complement what you have already going on there. And so in the next five years, we want to be considered that solution for people that have those types of, of needs in their areas. Right. We want to be known as that brand that can come back into the community and bring a healthy choice option and then be a, be a springboard for bringing other brands, other options, and other opportunities that people may often not see. Uh, so that's definitely something we would look forward to doing. Yeah, it's very important in the African-American community. Like yeah. You say serving underserved communities is very important because we need it the most. Right. Absolutely. Um, what about retail? Are you uh, planning getting your products in uh, any retail stores, maybe like a Whole Foods or uh, Aldi's or... Yeah, Ron, Ron touched on it earlier with our wellness drinks. I'll right, that's always that. a goal because we've created uh, some wellness shots that have some very unique right. uh, ingredients. Like one of our wellness shots um, has beets, garlic, ginger, turmeric, black seed oil, cinnamon, and dandelion roots. Oh, yeah. So it's a, it's a juice. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, absolutely our goal is to, you know, one day be able to meet the person that can get our that particular juice or any of our other any juices, other products, our yeah. mucus buster or our paradise shot, get them on the shelf so you know that people know that this is an option for them, whatever those ailments are, that these juices will actually you know directly affect those er those areas like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high blood sugar, and the more we can get it out in the community the more hopefully one day get it on the shelves. Mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah, and, and, and again, it, it starts with gut health. Uh, you know, I, I have this thing where I tell people, you know, your, your, your brain is not in your head, it's in your, it's, it's your gut. It's your gut. That's your gut. That's the center where your emotions stem from, your, you know, that sixth sense that you feel, that, mm -hmm. you know, raising the you know, hairs on the back of your neck, the, mm -hmm. You know, I don't feel, I feel uneasy about something, whether you're walking into a physical space you feel uneasy about or just how you feel. When you woke up, you felt a little different. Mm -hmm. You know, everything stems from that gut. And then the brain processes it differently, and it, it alerts things the right way. But right. your processing center really starts in your gut. And right. if, if you have the great, if you have the great foundation there, the ecosystem, you, you treat it right, then you'll start to notice awareness of certain things. You know, intermittent fasting is something that's really good. And, and uh, when you spoke about detoxing, you know, we have a detox package. We have a one-day detox package, and we have a three-day detox package that we offer leveraging our wellness drinks. Um, and when you look at the ingredients, when you go to our website to learn about it, or you come into our shops and you can look at the ingredients, we educate you on the walls, the information we have on the walls while you wait. Mm -hmm. uh, we have infomercials on YouTube and things of that nature that you can uh, tap into yeah. to learn about some of the things we offer. Right. So, do you do you yeah. ship your juices out? Do you have um, where they able, are people able to purchase um, online, and you ship out to other? to other states? Or? So within that five-year plan, it is to establish an online store and presence there. Okay. Right now, you would have to contact us directly, and then we can ship them to you. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a system in place for that just yet right. uh, as far as being able to make it very economically friendly, so it does cost for the packaging and the mailing and all of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the more we build up uh, a following um, with that, I think then you know we'll have the capacity to make that happen. We 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 know we have the packaging for it. It's just a matter of getting a following to really see it as a viable solution. Uh, we also sell things in half gallon jugs as well. So we have people that come from far and wide, from other states mm -hmm. that have seen benefits when they're battling cancer or battling, um, you know, trying to recover from doing the chemos and all this type of thing, uh, and some of their surgeries and things to reduce the inflammation in their body. They'll come and get our Vividration drink, our Mucus Buster and our Paradise drinks, and they get them in half gallons, and they found that it helps to improve and, and, and enhance that yeah. recovery process. Right. Uh, and they've, they've, uh, they've isolated too. Mm -hmm. I added this and I noticed the difference. When I didn't have this, I was struggling. But when I added this, it stimulated more energy. It stimulated a recovery difference. Mm -hmm. It stimulated more of a strengthening that I didn't have before. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any new developments or projects coming up? No. Not that I... Yeah, we've talked about. Yeah, I mean, other we, than what know. we spoke on already. 
yeah. <laughs> The, the beauty part about, you know, getting out in the community and meeting people, mm-hmm. you know, everybody knows something that's coming up that's new. You know, so they say, hey, this is a good spot. This may be a good spot for you. So the more that we're out there, the more uh, new spots we'll hear about. Okay. Yeah, yeah we, we're hoping, you know, that, uh, you know, we can we get a lot of push from the east side of town. Uh, I was born and raised out of Beaufort, Georgia, so... Um, you know, I get a lot of people wanting us to come up to the Gwinnett uh, side, for, so so a, a lot of my family and friends can actually support us from out that way, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know, did the cabs. So because we're touching in Fulton, we would like to expand our footprint in Fulton. Um, you know, it, it does cost to for us to do it. So you know, we you know we have limited resources and funds, and that's why we wanted to ex- build on the franchising piece to expand our brand. Uh, because we feel that, you know, if people really want it and they see the value in it, then they're going to help us with the growth. And that's how all these other brands have really expanded through franchising. And we want to follow that model. We're not going to reinvent the wheel. Right. Being in Greenbrier Mall helps. Yeah, I know. You know, because that's they a call lot, they, a lot of foot traffic. But the world of foot traffic, yeah. but not only that, mm-hmm. people at Greenbrier come from all over Georgia. You know, they're on the east side. They're, you know, DeKalb County, Gwinnett County. And we always hear, man, y'all need to bring one of these on our side of town. Right. And that's when we pitch them. Why yeah. don't you take one over there? And right now, yeah. Greenbrier is the safest from. mall in the metropolitan yeah. area. I just want people right. to go on record to know that right now. You guys give us a hard rap, but it's yeah. the safest mall in the metropolitan area right yeah. now. A lot right. of people be glad to know that. Yeah. Yes, it is. Because <laughs> of the perception. Right. That there's, you know, the stigma that's, that's out there. Exactly. They've right. changed that a lot. Yeah. yeah. They're doing a good job in that area. With gentrification, I'm seeing more businesses in that area. Yes. More apartments yeah. and other things. Yeah. You know, yeah. Being Stay built. tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah. yeah. Um, any closing remarks? Well, again, can you uh, what, offer what, any advice to any aspiring entrepreneurs out there? What what advice can you give them? Well, we are again Paradise Smoothie Juice Bar, and we are in four locations. Uh, we are in Atlanta, Greenbrier Mall, and we are in Cobb County. My advice to anyone that's uh, aspiring to be an entrepreneur is to be a lifetime saver, because we're always going to have an opportunity that's going to come across our desk. Right. The pop, the question is, will you be ready for it financially? So save your money, and when that opportunity comes across your desk, you'll be ready for it. All right, thank All right. you. Any closing remarks um, as far as contact yeah. information? Yeah, yeah, I, I would uh, like to say, you know, from a contact perspective, um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, uh, and TikTok as Paradise Smoothie Juice Bar, okay? Our website is paradise smoothie juice bar.com uh, we have a phone app a loyalty rewards app that you can download on uh, out of your iTunes or your Google Play Store called paradise smoothie juice bar that's where we do a lot of our communi- uh, communications with our paradise community as far as discounts um, you know uh, paraphernalia we, we, we provide uh, jerseys and hats and things like that mm-hmm. Um as far as uh, our, our uh, ability to do online uh, shipping, things of that nature, you can always contact us at 770-288-0444, which is our office number. Uh, you can text that number as well. Okay. Uh, any type of issues, regardless of what it is, that's the best way. I would say text, and you can get uh, pretty much almost immediate response. Uh, emails, uh, info at paradisesmoothiejuicebar.com. Or you can go to franchising at paradisesmoothiejuicebar.com. Uh, also, our franchise website for details there is franchising.paradisesmoothiejuicebar.com. Um, yes. Okay. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming out. Both Ron and Bill, you guys gave a great interview. And I wish you much success on Paradise. I'm sure you're going to be nationwide in no time. Mm-hmm. And I just love you guys for taking the time out. I met you at the Veggie Taste. I sampled one of the uh, one of the smoothies. Great. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be a frequent visitor, mm-hmm. so don't worry about that. <laughs> Thank you. And I uh, wish you guys much success for taking the time out to come to Streetpreneur Podcast today. Yeah. And uh, I wish you much success. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for inviting. Yeah. Thank you, Melvin. Yeah. Streetpreneur is all day, baby.